This is Joseph. I'm at Ape 2014 on behalf of Becky Holborn's Art Process Blog. Keep on trucking, Nata Sue. If you could introduce yourself, Rachel. Hey, um, I'm Rachel Lewis. Uh I draw comics under the name Mixtape Comics on the internet. Okay, and what's bringing you to Ape this year? Um, I'm here to promote uh, my cat comics, Frankie Comics, awesome. which is a series of strips and short stories that I do about living with my cat Frankie. Okay. And uh, do you find that Ape is a, a good convention to have a sort of like autobio, lighthearted comic? I do. People out here seem to find it really helpful, and that's good. That's what it's all about. Yeah. So, how did, uh, I mean, it seems like so many so many comic artists own cats, but um, how did you decide to, to make a comic about your cats? It's a funny thing, I never thought I was going to be one of those female cartoonists drawing cat comics. Um, you know, people are kind of like, oh, it's done, everybody's done it. But when I was in grad school at the Center for Cartoon Studies, I just started making strips to make myself laugh as part of my thesis, like, okay. sort of as a, as a joke and for practice. And I started posting them on the internet. intended to be like a multi-issue sort of comic or uh, it's just sort of what I've always done doing journal comics as long as I have that I just realized that it's a thing. All right and you mentioned uh, going to grad school you went to grad school in the San Francisco area? Not in the San Francisco area um, there's the Center for Cartoon <laughs> Studies out in White River Junction Vermont which was founded by James Kerr. Okay. Um, there's a lot of cartoons here from there actually. Um, awesome. But uh, that's where I went it's a two-year program it's MFA if you have your bachelor's or senior certificate program if you in your hand. Yeah. Second year thesis year and you work as an advisor and then you work on your thesis all year like a crazy person. And yeah. It it's wonderful. Yeah, we've talked to a lot of uh, graduates uh, like MFA, terminal degree artists, so they all have a story of just forcing you to do the work will make you a better artist. It really does. <laughs> the thing is, is everybody in my class was really amazing when they walked in anyway, but by the time everybody walked out, they were phenomenal. students there, so it was like a camaraderie sort of thing, like we're going to get through this? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. You all yeah. go crazy um, for, for two years together, locked in your apartment in the snow, but it, it builds that sense of community. You walk out and, you know, you'll, you'll always love these people. Like, you know, even, even if you don't get along interpersonally, you, you have so much respect for everybody for having survived it together, and you're so proud of everybody, you know, moving forward as professionals in the industry and graduation and all of that. So you've been staying connected with uh, we have, your like, fellow? Um, if, if you want to pan two tables down, okay. Andy Warner is down there, who publishes the Irene Anthology, he's a graduate of the Center for Cartoon Studies, and okay. we're buddies and have stayed in touch since then. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so were you intending to teach uh, by getting an MFA, or you really just felt like uh, undergraduate really hadn't in prepared the you? Program. My undergrad okay. was in animation. enough work? Um, it, it, I just needed more guidance. I just, I needed a new perspective on it, is yeah. what it was. And being able to go to CCS and, and work under James Firm and Steve Bissett and Jason Woods and John Chad and Alan Longstreth, like, gave me that. Like, um, I just, I just needed to be able to look at it differently and I needed more outside perspective to be able to do that. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, what specifically brought you to Ape? You're from the v Vermont area or you're currently living in San Francisco? Um, I, when I graduated, I moved back to Los Angeles. Um, oh, okay. But I, uh, I've been doing Ape since 2005. It's one of the better indie shows that there, that there are. Yes. And, uh, I'm pretty loyal to the Comic-Con International shows. I've been exhibiting with them since 2003. Okay. So it's just, it's one of my regular shows and I enjoy it and I love everybody up here and the Silver Sprocket crew next to me is up here and I'm buddies with them and Andy Warner is up here and I'm buddies with him. So it's a good excuse to come do this thing that I do and see my friends. Awesome. Yeah. So do you 
your friends also attend the wide gamut of conventions that you do as well? We talked about um, uh, SPX, we talked about MochaFest, and we talked about uh, TPAC, right? Yeah, yeah. All, the, all the big indie shows, like you know, yeah. TPAC is open, SPX, Uptown, um, the Portland Zine Symposium, the LA Zine Fest, that sort of stuff they do. The larger, like, Comic-Con shows, like Comic-Con yeah. International, Wizard World, that sort of stuff. So you're you're going with a large group of friends to these shows? That's yeah. Um, Silver Sprocket and Irene, which is Andy Warner's imprint, and myself, uh, we try to table with each other as much as possible because we work together as well on a multitude of projects. So it makes sense to cross promote and be together as much as possible. Definitely. So can you tell me a little bit about your experiences at Ape? Um, how long have you been coming here? Um, I've been doing Ape since 2005. Um, I think the show is lovely. Everybody is always really pleasant. For the most part, you know, people come up and they know what mini comics are and they know what self-publishing is. Um, at the larger shows, a lot of people come up and they're like, what is this? I don't understand. This isn't The Walking Dead. What do I do with this? <laughs> and uh, fortunately at Ape, that's not the experience. Do people feel like they should know the characters, but they don't? Or do they just not even give it a chance, you think, at other shows? I think because it's not recognizable, they, they're less likely to get the chance. It's not impossible. Yeah. It, it's just you have to actually guide them and take their hand and go, this is a mini comic. This yeah. is something I made myself. These are my characters. This is my experience. Right. And kind of explain so, to them what this community is. It's a separate kind of pitch for your comic than at a show like uh, Ape. Yeah, completely. Okay, and um, how would you compare the uh, the crowd of Ape to some of those other shows that we mentioned? Inside? Would you say um, partially in size and partially just what they're looking for? I mean, a crowd of Ape is looking for stuff like this that's self-published that you know that is a personal interaction and not a brand or a product. Yeah. Um, and and that's what people at larger shows are there for. They're there for the experience of seeing their favorite celebrities or. Even comparing Ape to like TCAF and Mocha Fest. Oh, but see, Mocha and TCAF and SPX, it's all this. It's, it's all, it's all very lovely people. Well, I'm, I'm not asking which is better. I'm asking like, do, do you think there's a difference in in the crowd in terms of uh, what they're looking for, or is everyone just there to talk to the artist of these comics in and buy from them? In my experience, every, everyone's here for the same thing at the big editions. We, yeah. we all know what this is. And there is, it's, that, it's for that community. Okay. Yeah. And um, where could we find your work online? Um, my work is available online at mixtapecomics.com and mixtapecomics.tumblr.com. I also recently signed up on Tabastic, and I think the URL for that is tabastic.com slash series slash Okay, and do you have any advice for someone who's considering coming to Ape for the first time? Just do it. Just do it? Yeah, yeah you'll, you'll have a really good time, and you'll see lots of cool stuff. Alright Rachel, well thank you for the interview. I hope yeah, you have a good so ape. Much. You too.